Hey everybody, welcome back. As many of you know, I've been using Procreate for about five years now as both an architect and full-time professional architectural renderer. And I know from reading the comments that a lot of you have the same two questions. Number one, is it worth it for me to get an iPad? And number two, if I do have an iPad, what's the best drawing app to get? Now I can't speak for all the drawing apps, but I thought it might be helpful to show you my top 10 reasons why I gave up pencils and paper after 20 plus years and started using Procreate full-time for my architectural design and my architectural rendering. So let's get right to it with reason number one. Your iPad is actually your sketchbook for the digital age. As an architect, I used paper sketchbooks all my life, but now the iPad has become the only sketchbook I need replacing all the tools I used to use with digital equivalents just a fingertip away. And now all those tools come together in one place. Reason number two, using layers like tracing paper. Design is all about iteration and you will use Procreate layers the same way you use tracing paper now as a way to build up your ideas one step at a time. Once you have the beginning of an idea you want to grow, just create a new layer of white Turn down the opacity, add a new drawing layer on top of that, and begin sketching again. This keeps an incremental record of the steps you take intact in case you ever want to go back, but it also multiplies the chances that the squiggles you draw by hand will trick your imagination and spark some new ideas. Reason number three, the select and move tool. Unlike an analog sketchbook where the marks you make remain on a single page, the Select and Move tool can help you organize and arrange the spontaneous marks you make into a more meaningful whole. You can isolate a small doodle and blow it up relative to the others, or move doodles around on the page as you build a larger composition. In our imaginary residential design exercise, this Select and Move feature makes it possible to combine a plan, section, elevation, and perspective sketch into one presentation board in only about three hours. Reason number four, quick lines and quick shapes. Sketching freehand is great, but there are times when you want to tighten things up without necessarily activating the drawing assist guides. The quick line feature allows you to hold the pencil down at the end of any freehand line and snap that line into a straight line. Similarly, the quick shape feature allows you to draw a shape like an ellipse or triangle freehand, then hold the pencil down to snap that shape into a more perfect form. You can then transform that shape any way you want. Reason number five, perspective and 2D grid drawing assist. When you're ready to see how your freehand sketch translates into accurate perspective, select drawing assist in perspective mode, find the vanishing points already implied in your sketch. Activate drawing assist in a new layer, and you are ready to continue designing while magically obeying the laws of perspective. The same applies for drawing or drafting lines along a 2D grid as when adding mullions to an elevation sketch. In this case, tap the drawing guide edit button, then select 2D grid instead of perspective, then activate the drawing assist in your current layer, and all your lines will draw at right angles unless you override them by holding down the pencil at the end of the stroke. Reason number six, coloring with the select and fill method. Adding color to drawings can be challenging, but Procreate can help by allowing you to use a select and fill technique to add color to an area defined by the selection tool. To add color to this elevation, I start by creating the new layer, then I use the selection tool in rectangular mode to select the area of the ground plane, then select a color, and drag and drop that color into the selected area. I can also fill the selected area by going to the drop down layer menu and tapping fill layer. Once an area is filled with color, you can always come back and modify that color using the hue, saturation, and brightness tools. To fill in the sky, I use the selection tool in freehand mode instead. Tap on the vertices of the selection I am making, then fill in the same way using either the drag and drop method or the drop down fill layer method. By keeping the selection area active, I can then use the soft brush on a new layer 
to add a white gradient over only the shape of the sky. Select and Fill is a great technique for quickly and graphically representing landscape, materials, and especially for creating shadows when used in conjunction with the Multiply Blend Mode. And adjusting colors after you choose them is one of the most effective ways to teach yourself about colors that I have ever come across. Reason number seven, artistic rendering brushes. Procreate's standard artistic brush set can definitely help you take your sketching and rendering up a notch. Two of my recent favorites are the Rad Brush, here providing a kind of abstract universal foliage in the foreground of my rendering, and the Taralia Brush, which produces an effect very similar to a watercolor brush, here used to create the background trees in the previous example, and the abstract tree forms here used to pop out the design against a background of foliage. Number eight, hue, saturation, and brightness. Like Photoshop, Procreate lets you alter any color in your rendering at any time by tapping on adjustments, then hue, saturation, and brightness, and adjusting those three sliders until you have just the color and just the value you want. In 20 years of using watercolor, I have found no better way to teach yourself about color than by simply playing and experimenting with these Procreate sliders. Reason number nine, blending modes. The significance of blending modes for architectural rendering is twofold. First, they can surprise you with the effects they produce, and you should just experiment with each of them. And second, by far the most practical blending mode is multiply because it ensures that anything darker than the color you've just applied, such as the underlying drawing in this example, will still show through. And this is a big help when rendering glass or shadows. And finally, my vote for the 10th way that Procreate can help architects because it just pulls everything together in one place. The pencils, pens, and erasers, the tracing paper, the straight edges, the perspective charts, the graph paper, the watercolors and brushes, the editing tools you already know and love in Photoshop, and even your scanner and copy machine. Procreate puts them all at your fingertips on an iPad smaller than a loaf of bread. And if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. So there you have it, my top 10 ways Procreate can help architects design and render. Of course, there are many more, and I encourage you to experiment and play with all of them. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here for the next video.